So basic circuit concepts part two. And again, today is going to be mostly terminology, a little bit of equations. We're really going to get into the meat and potatoes in lesson three. So the fact that I've done two lessons before your test, don't freak out. It says, recall that as charges flow through a circuit device like a resistor or a light bulb, they lose energy due to collisions with atoms in the wire. So if we have a current moving to the right in this piece of wire, and they're at a higher voltage, which means because voltage is energy per coulomb, each charge has more energy. When they go through a resistor, we transform some of that energy. They, they collide with other molecules. This resistor is made up of something so that the positive charges, I know the positives don't move, but we're going to pretend that they do from now on. So that the positive charges uh, give up their energy, and they give it up in the form of heat. And then they end up at a lower voltage. This energy lost by the charges is transformed into heat. And the energy lost by the charges is related to voltage drop because potential energy is QV. That's on your last unit, which is a nice review of the, what's some of the things you're going to see on your test. It says, fill in the steps below to find an expression for the rate at which the charges lose energy and check the units. So power, which is the rate at which work is done, or in this case, the rate at which the charges lose energy, uh, power is how much watts this particular electric device requires. Power we defined as energy loss or work over time. Remember that from unit three? So that means power is going to be QV over time. <coughs> Brennan? So far, so good. And then it says grouping. We're going to write this as Q over T V. I'm just going to say, hey, what is Q over T? And what is Coulombs per second? Do you remember from lesson one what we called that? Current. 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 As it turns out, this is current. Power is going to end up being IV or VI. This is called Joule's Law. Named after a scientist whose last name was? Power equals IV or VI. This is the third and uh, I think second last formula on your formula sheet. I think under circuitry, Adam, it does have uh, current equals <coughs> Q over T. Is that right? Yes? And then it has V equals I times R. I know it has that one. And then it has Joule's law. Which one does it have? Power equals VI? Okay. <clears throat> However, there's actually three different versions of Joule's law because remember we also said this. We had Ohm's law. V equals I times R. Did I say not to? Then write it down. What's V the same as, Jacob? No. What? So if I put an IR right there, I'll get IIR. Another expression for Joule's law is I squared R, if you plug the voltage law into there. That's not on your formula sheet, but in some ways that one I use more often than the other one. Or I could get the I by itself. How would I get the I by itself over here? So if I plug for the I V over R, I'll get V squared over R. These are the three different versions of Joule's Law that you can get from this first one. Uh, B, <clears throat> it wants the units. Well, do you remember? What do we measure power in? What? 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 Yeah, watts. Uh, has the hole puncher made it to everybody? You get the hole puncher yet? Send it back this way. Pass it down. Keep it going. Figure it out. So power is the energy drop per coulomb of charge times the coulombs of charge per second. Power equals the energy drop per coulomb of charge. That was joules per coulomb 
times the Coulomb of charge per second, and you end up with joules per second, which is watts. So when you have an electronic device and it has the wattage on the side of the electronic device, it's saying that's how much power that the charges are going to lose when they go through that device. We don't think of it that way. What we think of is that's how much power this device is consuming. So we think of wattage as positive on the device. It's actually a loss of power going through the resistor. Okay. Yep. So the rate at which electrical energy is transformed to heat energy is given by power equals VI. But please remember, oh, I forgot that I had this as an example. It says use Ohm's law V equals I times R to find two more relations for the power dissipation in a resistor. So we said one was I squared R. That's if you plug in the IR right there. And the other one was V squared over R. I rarely use this one. I usually use this one. I sometimes use this one. Did someone hit my door? Sorry? OK. <clears throat> All right. All right, let's go technical here. In finding the energy lost by the charges, technically we should use the work energy theorem, which this author writes this way. However, the charges flow at a constant speed, so your change in kinetic is zero. You know what? For what it's worth, getting technical, all he's saying is this does work. The fact that we can go energy loss is QV. We don't need to take the kinetic into account because the charges flow at the same speed throughout the current. They don't change their speed. <clears throat> so blah, 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 blah. Here's the more interesting questions. So you have a 1400 watt hair dryer. <coughs> and you plug it into a 120 volt alternating current socket. How much current do your house wires have to have? They have 120 volts. We agree with that. How much current? Well, I know 1,400 watts. What do I measure in watts? Power. So I have the power. Fourteen hundred. I know the voltage is 120. I'd like to find the current. Have I got an equation that has those things in it? Yep. Yeah. Power equals VI. So I is going to be the power divided by the voltage. It's going to be 1400 divided by 120. How many amps of current? Taylor? Oh, I thought I, thought I heard it. 11.7, uh, three sig figs, right? 11.7 amps. Easily enough to kill you. We said the other day that the death current, which would cause your heart to fibrillate, is 10 to the negative 3 amps. So this would actually not just cause your heart to palpitate, it would probably cause internal burning as well. <clears throat> Again, we want to try and give you a gut instinct as to what's a big answer, what's a small answer. It says, mix and match the following appliances with their power ratings. Remember we said... Power is the rate at which electrical energy is transformed to heat. So what you want to really think about when you're looking at these is which ones move or create the most heat, which ones move or create the least amount of heat. So let's uh, look here. Which of these do you think generates the smallest amount of heat? I think the clock is going to be 0 0.1 watts, which is my smallest answer over here. I'm also going to assume that all of you have put in a light bulb at least once in your life. What's the average wattage on a light bulb? Yeah, 60, 100, 40, depending on the lighting. But here I see 60 watts. I'm going to say that's a light bulb. So I'm kind of going process of elimination here. <clears throat> With what's remaining, 
What moves the most heat? Now, uh, Brandon said microwave. Have any of you looked or uh, at the wattage on your microwave, or have any of you cooked microwave food? Because in the recipe, it will say, assuming a blah blank 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 wattage for your microwave. What are most microwaves around ish? They're around a thousand. If I was going to guess microwave here, I would probably pick the twelve hundred because it does say large microwave. Microwave is about twelve hundred watts. What did you guys say moved the most heat? I'm torn right now between the hot water heater and the clothes dryer. Okay. Well, here's what I'm going to ask. Which one moves the most heat quicker? And I think the clothes dryer does, because I think a hot water heater actually just kind of gradually heats up the water. It doesn't make it very, very hot, very, very fast. So I, I'd probably take either answer, but I think a clothes dryer has that many watts. And the reason I'm also leaning towards the clothes dryer, if any of you look behind your dryer, is it a normal plug? No, you need special plugs for two appliances in your house, the stove and the clothes dryer. They're a 220 volt outlet. So I'm going to bank on clothes dryer being the biggest, and I'm going to bank on hot water heater being the next biggest. Then I have kitchen fan and computer. 150 watts, 800 watts. I think a computer throws a lot of heat off. Where a kitchen fan, it's an electric motor. It's going to draw some power. So I'm going to go with kitchen fan, 150 watts. And I'm going to say computer is about 800 watts, as is a small microwave. So a small, like a camper microwave, for example, it's probably an 800 watt. Okay. I have seen them on a provincial as a multiple choice question, say, a particular power appliance draws 3,000 watts of power. Which of the following appliances is most likely that appliance? And we'll have, you know, A, light bulb, uh, B, uh, electric pencil sharpener, C, uh, clothes iron, uh, D, hair dryer. Probably the clothes iron because that thing gets pretty hot. You know, so the, they, you do need to have a gut feel for certain. Hopefully, all of you know a light bulb is 60 to 100 watts. And I'm telling you right now, a microwave is about 1,000. So you got stuff to compare it to. Uh, electrical energy. Since power is energy over time, or work over time, we can solve for energy and find, I think, energy is going to be power times time. If power is energy loss divided by time, then energy is power times time. And that's how we measure your electric bill. Does anybody know? I know you guys are young. You don't pay your own electricity yet, but most of you will pay your first utility bill in the next five years or so. You know what they measure your electric bill as? Kilowatt hours. Here the kilowatt, here the power. Hours, here the time. That's how much energy you use, kilowatt hours. It's not, they don't use a metric unit because the metric, if they used uh, watt seconds, it'd be hideous numbers. So kilowatt hours is what they go with. Okay. So... Since a joule is a relatively small unit of electrical energy, it's common to use a larger unit, the kilowatt hour. Power, time. You can see it right in there. One kilowatt hour is 1,000 watts times 3,600 seconds. Because 3,600 seconds is one hour. So it's 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. So a typical household will use 10,000 to 3,000 kilowatt hours of electrical energy per month. And you can see if we kept it in joules, you would have, let's say, a big household, 3,000 times 3.6 times 10 to the 6th. Your bill would be a little unwieldy to read how many joules of energy that you use. So kilowatt hours, it's in the thousands. Most of us can do math and keep track of answers in the thousands. Um, just for the environmental nerd within me, if a 60-watt light bulb is left on all month, 30 days times 24 hours per day, how much energy will it use in joules and in kilowatt hours? So in joules, the energy is going to be the power times the time, 60 watts of power, times 
30 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds, I believe. How many joules of energy if you live a light bulb on 24-7 for one month of 30 days? How many joules of energy will it use? Good question. 60 times 30 times 24 times 60 squared. I got that, isn't it? Oh, I thought I heard different numbers. 1.55 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Is that right? 1.55 times 10 to the 8 joules. How many kilowatt hours is that? Okay. Um, well, if one kilowatt hour is that many joules, I think I can go like this. 1.55 times 10 to the 8 joules times 1 kilowatt hour for every 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. I'm using good old physics 11 unit analysis because the joules cancel. So I guess I'm going to take this number on my calculator and divide it by 3.6 times 10 to the 6. And I get 43.2 kilowatt hours. And it's not kilowatt slash hours. That would be kilowatts per hour. It's kilowatts is a capital W. I should make that clear, Mr. Duick. And the abbreviation for hours, I think, is lowercase hr. So if BC Hydro charges six cents per kilowatt hour, how much to leave that bulb on 24-7 for an entire month? times 0 0.06, six cents, two dollars and sixty cents. Two dollars and fifty-nine cents if we round off. And that's the big problem we have right now here in BC. We get our electricity for cheap. So why do we go ballistic about trying to conserve electricity? It's not to save money, although it does save you a little bit. I mean, save a couple bucks and it adds up. It's because there's a limited amount of electricity out there. How old are all you, 17? So take a guess. Do you think we'll be using more electric devices or fewer electric devices 10 years from now? Yeah, the demand for electricity is going to go up, and not just in North America. Think about all the third world countries that are gradually moving to second and first world standards of living, China being a terrific example, do you think they're going to want electronic devices? Yeah. So it isn't that electricity is so expensive, at least not here in BC, we're blessed with hydroelectric power, it is that there's a finite amount and even the hydroelectric power has environmental damage. We dammed a lot of rivers back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. How's our salmon fishing doing the past decade or so? Not so great. We didn't think about the possible consequences. So what's the moral of the story? You're not shutting the light off to save the money. You're shutting the light off to save the planet, which is a different reason, but I think a more important one. Okay. So shut your lights off. Don't leave the TV on when you go out. Yeah. Pitt Meadows topped BC as the number one power saver during when? Oh, during Earth Hour, when everyone's supposed to turn off lights? Okay. I did not know that. Send me the link, and I'll happily add that to my lesson. I'm dead serious. Okay? So there's power in a circuit. What's power? VI. Oh, yeah, also I squared R, and also... Uh, by the way, I use whichever power equation for the stuff that they give me. Often, I'll know the current and the resistor, which is why I use the I squared R one more often. Efficiency. How much bang for your buck? 
We did efficiency a while ago, but this is also a good review because we're getting towards the end of the year. Efficiency was defined as energy or power out to energy or power in. Recall that the Greek letter eta is often used for efficiency. Now, I didn't know that, actually. I used to just write EFF for efficiency, but you can write that, or you can use the Greek letter eta, which is where our N came from eventually. And it's going to be power out divided by power in or energy out divided by energy in, or work out divided by work in. Or, here's what I really said. I don't memorize the equation, Evan. I know that if they're asking me to find the efficiency, it's always the smaller number divided by the bigger number. Because if you get an answer bigger than 100%, you've either made a mistake, or your name will be more famous than Einstein and Newton because you've solved the world's energy problem. You'll be on a coin, you'll be on a stamp, you'll be on a bill, assuming you don't own the world yourself by the time all is said and done. And the reason I say that is I have a specific question in mind. I can't remember whether it's on this test or whether it's in the review, but there's one question where the way that they phrase it when they talk about the power out the word in appears right before that in the sentence. And so kids want to put the power out in the bottom because they're used to memorizing the equation. And they want to tell me, I think it's a light bulb. They want to tell me the light bulb is 140% efficient. Be great. Ain't going to happen, unfortunately. Okay. <clears throat> now, number six is a nice question in that it's nerdily cool to me. It's not so nice in that this really isn't quite what they're going to ask on the provincial. I'm only going to do parts of this. So it says a 60 watt light bulb is connected to 120 volt volts AC. Find the current. OK. Power equals voltage times current. I'm pretty sure that current is going to be the power divided by the voltage. How many watts of power is this light bulb drawing? 60 divided by household current is 100, uh, sorry, household voltage is 120. I checked this in my head. 60 over 120, what is that lowest terms? Yeah, this one's going to draw, draw about half an amp. Uh, I should add the zero to some place, right? Still have to kill you. More likely you get a nasty shock, though. Probably wouldn't die. It wouldn't be pleasant, though. B. What's the resistance of the bulb? Well, V equals I times R. R equals V over I. How many volts is this bulb hooked up to? 120. How many currents, how many amps are flowing through this bulb? 0.5. Uh, careful, not 60. You're dividing by 0.5. What's the answer? 240. This is about a 240. What was the symbol for ohms? Do you guys know? Uh, my physics teacher called it a mouse hole in a wall. Right? Remember the old cartoons? There's your mouse hole in the wall. Pardon me? Well, they're not that obvious in real life, believe me. Oh, in the cartoons? Because they have to make us laugh. Um, C. What's the efficiency of this bulb? Well, efficiency is going to be how much you get out divided by how much you get in. And it says we're getting 58 watts of light and heat. Now, the problem is bulbs are actually very inefficient, but it wants us to count the heat as a good thing. So maybe this is a bulb being used to heat stuff. 
Easy Bake Oven was the classic. I was going to say that one. Or if any of you live on a farm, you often have bulbs that in the wintertime in chicken coops and things like heat lamps, right? So we're going to get, and then times 100%, what's the efficiency of this bulb? About 97% efficient, which makes the bulbs sound really, really good. Actually, light bulbs, uh, the incandescent bulbs, are terribly inefficient. Hence, which is why most office buildings or whatever have the fluorescent bulbs. That was the first big stretch. Those are way more efficient because they don't get very hot. They do get still hot after a while. Probably in your lifetime, LED bulbs will become the standard. In fact, it was just last year the Philips light bulb company built an LED bulb that looks just like an incandescent bulb, but it uses, I think, about 1 one hundredth of the energy. Oh, and it's almost infinite lifetime. LED bulbs last decades if you treat them nice. The only problem is right now one bulb costs, I think, about 30 bucks. They're going to be gradually coming down in price. So probably in your lifetime you'll start to see, you, you may even see these things go the way of the dodo because the problem with these things is there's mercury on the inside of them. So anytime that one of these breaks, technically we have to clear the classroom and I'm going to break. No, but yeah, we have to get like a special, there's special procedures to deal with the mercury on the inside. Is mercury? I think it's mercury inside these. Okay. So there's a, there's a big push right now for those incandescent, curvy, curly spiral light bulbs. I'm, I gotta be honest, not a big fan of those because of the mercury issue and because in terms of the savings and going green and carbon footprint, I think in terms of what it takes to make them, the carbon footprint trade-off isn't substantial in terms of bang for your buck. Once LED bulbs become around five bucks a piece, I, I, I think I'd be willing to make the switch then. Uh, D, how much energy is used? Well, we said that energy was power times time. How many watts? 60. Oh, you know what? Let's do our energy in kilowatt hours. How many hours of time pass? Oh, so this will give us an answer in watt hours. Then we'll change it to kilowatt hours. So in watt hours... 480, so I think 0.48 kilowatt hour, because 1,000 would be a kilowatt, right? Just about half a kilowatt hour. Yep, 0 0.06 times 0.48, and you'll get about three cents, I think, when all said and done. And again, this is the problem. Evan, it's tough for us because as human beings, we're naturally lazy and motivated by greed. The fact that we're not saving that much money, there are people, I leave my lights on all the time. It's, it's not about saving the cash. It's about recognizing 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you guys are young. You are part of the technology generation. You understand how much more you're going to be wanting to use electricity, right? Probably most of you still, well, do any of you still have grandparents that don't use a computer at all? See, only a few of you. See, all, my, all my grandparents wouldn't know what to do with a computer. My folks got their first one about six years ago because grandchildren can send email. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a plus. And my dad has gotten... Well, my dad actually bought himself a printer about a month ago and installed it himself. All he'd do is plug it in, but that was a big step for him. I was very proud of my dad, okay? He has a laptop now because he's using it for work. So, so my dad was the, was the pre-computer generation. My high school, so I went to junior high in 1983. We had an Apple II, one Apple II in the school. My senior high had a full computer lab, but they were way ahead of the game. So... Again, Jasmine, the moral of the story is you're not turning the light off for money. You're turning the light off for the future. So shut your lights off. Save a little bit of energy. It takes very little effort to do some basics. How many of you are driving? Turn your car off when you're idling. Because that actually, does, with gas prices right now, that does add up. And in fact, I think 
who is it GM I believe GM is coming out with one of their vehicles next year that will um, whenever you come to a stop shut itself off and as soon as you give it gas turn itself back on without you having to do the key thing all you have to do is you have to make sure that you tell the, com the computer controls where about where the camshaft is when you come to a stop if it stops in the right place then as soon as you give it gas it'll just kick on and start going again uh, in rush hour that'd be a huge savings not just in terms of the greenhouse gases but I think that would add up so I won't be shocked if in five years that becomes a fairly standard feature for most cars auto shut off when you come to a stop sorry well car that drives itself I think is gonna be longer term but that that one can be done see the car that drives itself is gonna be more expensive and it won't save you money the car that shuts itself off they can probably build the software in for about 500 bucks I would think you'd save that within two or three years with today's gas prices. Uh, the Google cars that drive themselves. Turn the page. Okay. I'm going to give you a couple of questions, and this is also dealing with power and current. Some of this ties into last unit anyways. So, number one. If you know how many watts and you know the voltage, you should be able to find the current and the resistance because I gave you three equations for Joule's Law that has all three of them in there. Um, Let's cook a hot dog. Seven. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve are all review. Unless I see a good electrostatics review question here. No, you guys got a test next class. I'm just going to give you one, three, and seven for now. And I'm deliberately... I. I Last year, I did two lessons today. Uh, you have a test next class. I'm going to give you this to study, to work on the review. But use this, please, to work on the review. Tutorial today after school.